Ah, good morning, my friends. Uh, ooh, wow, morning. Holy shit. Um, so good. Good evening. Good evening. Um, it's six fifty right now. Um, and I'm leaving my window open so we could enjoy the natural sounds of the Sunrise Highway Service Road, uh, blaring, uh, into my microphone. Uh, mostly because I need to air out my room because I haven't opened a window in like five months. So, yeah, we're gonna have to deal with that a little bit. Sorry, folks, but it is what it is, right? So I'm just going to hop right into it. Um, first and foremost, I am so pissed off about this Ukraine-Russian um, stuff going on. And for a lot of reasons, and it's mostly from, like, you know, the spectator position and, and the runoff culturally it has on our country. And one of those things is the ethnic hatred towards Russians. So a lot of um, companies have started pulling off products from supermarket shelves that are from Russia, have a Russian name, such as Russian salad dressing. You can't get that anymore. Um, there's other material goods you can't get from Russia. There's a lot of, you know, all trade has been cut with them. And a lot of Russians in this country feel like they have to, you know, speak out against, you know, a government that they're not even a part of. Nor were they ever a part of. A lot of Russians that came to this country um, were a part of the Soviet government. So the 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 absolute insanity of it, right, is it, just it, – it's mind-blowing. They have to defend a, a government they haven't lived under or haven't lived under in like over a decade. So it's it's you know, and of course they know it's bad. You know they left. They left Russia for a reason. They didn't like the government, so they said, "All right, you know, I'm out. I'm going to America," and that's that. But still, there's hatred against them. You know, there, there's there's this feeling of animosity towards the Russian because they say, "Oh, well, you know, Russians are bad because you know if they don't speak out against their government," which is something I'm going to get into in a little bit. Um, but first, I want to. This is being proposed by Western companies. So basically, the the Western companies not only are taking, uh, you know, these products off the shelves, but they're also censoring pro-Russian and anti-war stances. So let me explain. So, you know, I'm not pro-Russian, nor am I pro-Ukrainian, but we're you know part of a war is a propaganda war, right? And you know, a lot of people believe in moral and virtue. So if we're against Russians, and the Russian, if we're against the Russian government, because they're an autocracy, they're an oligarchy, and they suppress freedom of speech and what have you, why are they suppressing RT News? Why are they suppressing Sputnik Radio? Why are they suppressing, you know, the, you know, outlets that are pro-Russian? Why? We're not at war with Russia. I could see if we were at war with Russia and you wanted to get rid of their state, you know, funding. You know, the state-funded media company in America. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, that makes sense because we're at war. But we're not at war. Ukraine's not even in NATO. So why are we having these, you know, views and opinions censored? You know, and it's admittedly bad propaganda. I'm not going to hold you. Like, you know, so it, it doesn't even really, you know, make sense to me. So, you know, banning all these companies... I mean, you know, banning all these media companies that, that show a pro-Russian statement uh, flies in the face of what we're criticizing President Putin of doing with banning Western companies and banning Western voices. And it's like, no, you know, we're, we should be like, we're better than you. Fine, you could have your state-funded media blaring whatever crap they want in America. We have a bunch of other media that already does that and perverts our minds every day. You know, we're not at war with you, so why should we censor you? And mind you that the people that work for RT America are American citizens or they're American residents. So they're still, they have a right to, you know, have a, um, a stance that is controversial and different, just like anti-war protesters like me, people that are against the war in Russia and Ukraine and American involvement and NATO involvement. We should not be involved period in this conflict because it doesn't concern us. The and anti-war stances. So, you know, frequently what I'll do is I go on the Internet or I talk in person to people and they'll be like, oh, you support Putin or, oh, you know, you're you're um, what do you mean? You don't stand with Ukraine. This type of silly things like this. You know, why are we supporting these things? And I say that all the time. Like, why are we supporting these things? And if you want to go to war so so bad, 
you can go to war. You can go enlist at the enlistment office. You could go and join the Marines. You can go volunteer in the Ukrainian foreign battalions. You go do that. But I have, and surprisingly, a lot of liberals, not conservatives, they're actually anti-war now, which is like, whoa, what the fuck happened there? So the Republicans are like anti-war now. The liberals are not. They want to go to war because they want this Harry Potter type of ending to the conflict where we're the good guys and they're the bad guys and that's it. So stupid. Trump years really rotted their brain. Uh, I get told all the time on the internet and in person, like, oh, you know, you know, the, the, you know, they're fighting for rights in Ukraine. How could you support Putin? You know, he's a war criminal. And that's something that really grinds my gears. They're, you know, people that are against the war are being slammed as, you know, supporting war crimes and supporting another government. Let, that makes no sense. I'm literally saying I don't want to be involved in the war. I commented on um, the Red Jugs Instagram because they have this this Ukraine-themed drink. And I basically explain the history of the Ukrainian conflict. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that right now. And I'm going to show you – I'm going to read you exactly what I said, right, about Ukraine. So – I said that NATO worked to put, which is true, this is all true stuff that you could look up. NATO worked to put Yeltsin in power to confirm the destruction of the USSR. So that led to an explosion of little nations like Ukraine, Belarusia, Latvia, Estonia, sector, right? Russia then applied for NATO membership in the early 2000s and was denied despite meeting the qualifications to join NATO. And then the West deposed the elected government of Ukraine in 1914 by taking advantage and funding of the Euro Maiden movement which then led to Donetsk and Luhansk separating because they held a referendum during that movement to rejoin Russia. And this, of course, led to, you know, war against Ukraine. Like, obviously, you know, they're not going to let that go. Um, and, of course, this led to the far-right extremist groups in both Russia, Luhansk People's Republic and Donetsk People's Republic and Ukraine, all pressing their governments for legitimacy. So this is an attempt to create a multipolar imperial system instead of the current unipolar one by Russia. So, you know, if you say fuck Putin, you got to say fuck NATO as well. And it's not our country. It's not our problem. So it's kind of sick to promote off the tragedy, too, and most likely donate to a scam organization. So that got deleted. And this happens to a lot of people that have similar sentiments where they both where they think the whole war is stupid and they understand that it's very complicated. And it, you know, America getting involved in complicated things leads to Afghanistan, Vietnam and Korea. So we kind of understand at this point, hey, we shouldn't get involved in other people's business, but that's just me. So anyway, what ends up happening now is if you have a vaguely critical point, you post it on the internet, you talk about it in person, you go against the norm, you're going to get attacked. You're going to get canceled. You're going to get censored by companies and eventually the government because, you know, when we go to war, you know, we're going to end up getting censored. People that are against this are going to end up getting censored. Marjorie Green Taylor is against the war and Anonymous threatened to make her life a living hell because of it. I don't agree with the woman on much, but I'll defend her because she's anti-war. So in this instance, she's actually right. And what Anonymous is doing is crazy. So they're trying to, you know, silence an elected official. I don't care if you like her or not. She's an elected official. She's an elected official and they're trying to intimidate and censor someone in the United States that was elected for speaking out against the war. That we're accusing of Putin of being an autocrat and a dictator and suppressing people that he doesn't like. We, we literally push American values on other countries and expect them to act like that. And then we you know expect them to be okay with us acting differently at home. And this kind of brings me to my next point. Um of the hypocrisy in both Russia and NATO, right? So people like that and that narrative that's being pushed literally don't understand that NATO claiming to respect sovereignty but also committing war crimes is somehow not insane to them. The We bombed Yugoslavia in 1991. We bombed civilian centers. We killed half a million Iraqis in the early 2000s. We bombed Afghanistan despite the Taliban literally being willing to hand over um, Osama bin Laden, who was part of Al-Qaeda, and the two groups were completely different. Al-Qaeda was operating in Afghanistan, and the Taliban didn't want 
Osama in Afghanistan. So they're just like, yo, we know where he is, bro. Just take him. Don't bomb us. And what did we do for 20 years? We bombed them. We're actively allowing the Saudi regime to finance healthy rebels in Yemen and kill millions of people every day. Millions of civilians are starving. Thousands are dying a day. Like, I think half the country is dead. I think 3 million out of 6 million people died in Yemen. The Yemeni genocide. We allow that to happen. The 9-11 attackers were in Saudi Arabia. All of them were Saudi. Osama was Saudi. And we give the Saudi Arabians money for oil. We literally killed hundreds of Italian communists after World War II because... We didn't want them, you know, establishing a a, a communist republic in Italy. So we employed former fascists to go kill them. We finance so we do so many bad things. The government does so many bad things around the world. Yet we're expected to be okay with that and, you know, apply, you know, our moral standards to other countries except our own. You know, we'll only vaguely protest our government. Or, say, or make up excuses why we can't go to anti-war protests or, or civil rights protests, but then we expect every single Russian citizen to overthrow their government. We couldn't even do that and wouldn't do that here in America, so why would we expect the Russians to do it? It is so stupid. It is so stupid. And then we have the Russian claims of denazification, which is insane. They're hypocrites for that too. Because they host far-right training camps and fund various organizations around the world that are far-right. And they're actively employing a group called Private Military Corporation Wagner to go to war with the Ukrainians. So the Ukrainians have the Azov Battalion, which is a neo-Nazi group that's implemented into their National Guard. And then you have the Russians taking their neo-Nazis to shoot the Ukrainian neo-Nazis and the Ukrainian soldiers. So it's it's not even a war against denazification. It's a war for control and the creation of that multipolar state. The the two dichotomies, the two factions to balance each other out again. The the Russians are literally using denazification as a pretext for war like the United States uses spreading democracy as a pretext for war. That's literally the only di- the only difference between the Russian Federation and the United States of America's foreign policy. These Save Ukraine rallies are also going to be used as proof that we give consent for war as a people. So we're essentially literally telling the ruling class of this country, like, yeah, you know, look at all these hundreds and thousands of people. We want we want justice for Ukraine. We want justice for Ukraine after just demanding demilitarized police and cutting the military budget two years ago. It's insanity, and it's going to be used as a pretext for war. And then when we have to go to war and your draft number gets called, we'll see how much you care about saving Ukraine when your draft number gets called and you're drafted into the United States Marines and you're the first one to get a bullet between the eye for a fucking Ukrainian. Then we have ordinary Americans. Oh, yeah, I already went over that. Ordinary Americans blaming Russians who don't protest. I technically already hit that. And then, yeah, this is another point. This is another point I wanted to hit home before I end this. So, ordinary Americans blaming Russian people for the crimes of their government, yet absolve themselves from the crimes of our government at home. I can't tell you how many people I've seen in my personal life and on the internet that are, you know, blaming the Russian people and the Russian government, you know, for the horrors of the war and the terror. And, you know, it's every Russian's responsibility. You know, every Russian's guilty. It's all their fault. They all need to fight against this and be against this because they're committing war crimes against Ukrainians. But I will not see a single American. I will not see a single American go out into the street and fight for the Yemeni, fight for the Afghan, fight for the Iraqi, fight for, I don't know, the Iranian what have you, any any Middle East, the fight for the Syrian, fight for the Kurd, fight for the Armenian, you will not see, you will not, or the, any, any Latin American, you will not see any American do that. They'll blame everyone else in the room except themselves. They'll, Americans will absolve ourselves from the crimes of our government. We'll say, oh, well, you know, that's not my problem. That's the government's problem. And I voted for the other guy and he seemed to be for peace. 
Or they'll say, oh, I know, like, what the government's doing is so terrible. I feel so bad for those people in the Middle East. So then they post something on Instagram and think that that's good. They absolve themselves and say, oh, well, I did something, you know, I donated to the Red Cross or I posted this thing about how bad the war is in on Instagram. And, you know, I did all this, but I didn't go to the anti-war rally. I didn't write my senator. I didn't hold a, uh, a lecture about all the terrible things that are going on and, and provide solutions to the problem. You know, I didn't go door to door to to warn people about how the wars are affecting the the public expenditure and that's why our communities are suffering i didn't do any of that i went on instagram or i made a podcast about it and called it a day and that's all i did i never went to an anti-war thing i never joined an anti-war organization or an organization that had anti-war as one of their principles i never did anything that's all i did and i'm fine with that because just by acknowledging it and by you know maybe donating a dollar here and there and getting on with my day saying, yeah, that's bad. I'm against that. That makes me a good person. And that means, you know, I'm absolved from my government's crimes. And it's obviously not me. And you know what? When the Iranian government was almost attacked by when was almost attacked by this country, when Trump was about to fly in the F-22s and level the whole country, the Iranian government said, we know it's not the American people. We know it's the American government, so when we say death to America, we say death to the American government. And everyone took a huge sigh of relief, but us Americans will never afford that to the people of Russia who would be elated, elated to hear it's not the people of Russia. And I see some sick shit on the internet. I see people wishing death and starvation upon the Russian people, and they laugh and they joke about you know Russians struggling for food in the supermarkets and starving and children selling themselves out for bread and going on the internet to sell porn so they could feed their families. But yeah, you know, Russia bad. Russia bad. And everything, you know, about, you know, everything that I just mentioned, you know, it's all hypocrisy. It's all just like, think of, you know, what about us? We're Americans. We don't, we don't want to do anything. It's our government that's the problem, but yet we will just blame everyone and their mother for anything else across the world. All I'm going to say is this. There's a complicated history with Ukraine. Um, I could, I want to go full in depth about the history of Ukraine from, from 1991 on about why this is all happening. But it's a very complex thing that I don't even know all the details about. And I've been paying attention since 2015. So, and I still don't know what's going on, you know? So I still have to, to, to do my research on this. So all I'm going to say to you, the listener, is not our country, not our problem. Not our country, not our problem, not our country, not our problem. And that's it. Uh, if you liked this episode, thank you very much. Episode 173. You'll actually hear more of me uh, tomorrow, um, Monday, uh, 321, from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. on 103.9 FM. I'll be um, guest star, guest starring, I guess, on uh, the talk show I work on every morning, which is L.I. in the a.m. Uh, with the smart guys. Jay, unfortunately, who's the, the host of the show, if you've listened, he won't be on, unfortunately, because he's going to be flying in from Florida that day. But... Um, the smart guys and myself and, uh, you know, we'll be taking over and, uh, it'll be, it'll be fun. So tune in 103.9 FM, six to nine AM. It's also on the website, lnnewsradio.com. Uh, it, also if you want to, you know, get BPA merch, uh, I have a merch page. It's in the, the link under, it's the shop link on my link tree or, um, in the description of this podcast episode. And, uh, if you want to buy some weed, uh, Jackson Cannabis is uh, an affiliate of mine. You go to buyoregonhemp.com and you type in Canna15 for 20% off your order. Really good stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Backpacking America, and until next time.